Hello, hello, and welcome to our Toronto. There has been a lot of negativity about the TTC recently that has not exactly been uplifting. So today I've decided to make a video about perhaps what could be called the good side about the TTC. The subway system in Toronto has a total of 75 stations, including the Scarborough RT, which at the time of making this video was shut down, but I'm still going to include it. Most of these stations are boring and otherwise unremarkable. But we do have some stations that really add to the character and charm of the city, and so I wanted to make a list of these and share them. These are really based on my own opinion, and are really subjective to each individual. If you have a different station that you think should be number one, a completely different list, or think that I missed something, then leave it in the comments. So with that out of the way, let's get started. So in fifth place, we have Midland Station along the Scarborough RT. Now, there are several stations along the Scarborough RT that I could have chosen that add character to the city, but I chose it for two main reasons. It's unique in that the station itself is over the street, and because of its seemingly isolated location. I would be lying if I didn't say that at first this building looks like an eyesore, especially if you're driving down Midland. But then again, this is a design from the early 80s, and is representative of the times and consistent with the building styles of many other buildings that were built in Toronto at that time, so it doesn't stick out too much. It also does not exactly have the most stunning landscape around it. I mean, look at all the low-density industrial buildings around it. You certainly wouldn't go there for the scenery. But then again, I suppose that's the reason they chose this location to build the SRT. But on the other hand, once you go into the station from the street, it has a really easy access to and from the street. And then there sits this really small station there that feels like a miniature subway station. And you really get a perspective on just how small the SRT actually is. This is a station that is not busy at all. It has a really nice spacious and open feeling inside, well lit with natural light and windows all throughout. When you stand inside the station, it does not even feel like you're in a city with 3 million plus people living in it. Charming for sure, and maybe more from the inside than the outside, I would say. But if you're in Toronto, this station gave you that small town vibe that the city is known for. So moving on, in fourth place, we have Union Station, and you probably knew that this was going to be on this list. I'm sure most of you heard of Toronto's Union Station, and if you live in Toronto, then you've probably been there. It's the gateway to the Toronto Lakeshore and Islands. Sure, Union Station is a transit hub jungle, but the interesting part of this is the 509 Lakeshore and 510 Spadina streetcars that connect to it underground. You have to go through a small tunnel when you come out of the subway to get to the streetcars. Then there's this underground station that is cut out of the loop that the streetcar makes at this terminus. Even though Union Station is in what is probably the busiest and most important transit hub in the entire country, you wouldn't know it when you transfer to the streetcar. It gets busy sometimes, especially in the summer when people are going to the CNE or Center Island, but even then it still doesn't have the hustle and bustle feel of a big city. So that's why it makes this list. You have to admit that we have some pretty cool streetcar stations in Toronto, and this is one of them. So third on this list is Main Station along the Bloor Danforth subway line 2 in the eastern part of the city in East York. Despite its name, Main Station is a small station that reminds you of the main station of a small city. There is a small terminal, a few bus bays with bus lines, and a streetcar that operates in and out of the station. It has a really inviting look, that does not look urbanized at all. It sits off the main road, and you just simply walk up to the station. It's located on a small street with commercial shops, steps away from the residential houses neighboring it. I mean, if you were walking by and not paying attention, you could just walk right by it and not even notice that it's there. It almost blends into the environment that well. You just have to stop and take that in. In second place is St. Clair West Station. This really is one of the most unique subway stations and streetcar interchange stations in the city. The streetcar goes underground on St. Clair on both ends into a completely underground station where it turns around and continues along its route to either Keel or Young Street. This station is barely even noticeable from the outside when you're on street level and you would not even know that you're right next to a busy subway station. From the outside, the station is not that interesting, other than seeing that the streetcars are going down somewhere, but riding the streetcar is something else. When you get down, you get to go around and see the entire streetcar and bus platform. This station just does not feel as busy and large as it actually is, while it is very easy to get in and out of. On the outside, it is located right next to a grocery superstore, across the street from a park, and very close to the Casa Loma. Union Station is just way too urbanized and overrated to make it this high up on this list. So right before we get to what I think is the most charming subway station in Toronto, let's pay tribute to some of the most used and least charming subway stations in Toronto.
Okay, so what I think is the most charming subway station in Toronto is Broadview Station. This station has a lot of the same qualities as Main Station does. But there are some things about Broadview Station that are more unique, such as its interesting design that makes it inviting to be at and see. It serves downtown streetcar and bus routes, yet it's still very small, attractive looking and inviting. This is opposed to the busy concrete jungles that some of the other subway stations in the city are. It has a small welcoming platform with some canopies, located right next to a parquet with residential houses on small streets on one side and busier commercial buildings on the other, on Danforth Avenue. Despite this, you would not know it being at this station, as it faces the quiet and otherwise unassuming residential streets with detached houses. If you're visiting Toronto, then I would recommend visiting any of these stations if you're looking for a more authentic feel of the city, and to see some of the small town charm and vibe that the city still has to offer. I hope that you liked the video. If so, please give it a like. If you're not subscribed and want to be notified of new videos that are released, please click on the Art Toronto button here. This is the video that I would recommend for you to watch next, and I'm sure that you're going to love it. Here's the playlist for all of the latest in transit news and views that you're going to find very informative and interesting. And finally, here is the latest video. Thanks for watching, and happy transiting!